And now we came to the place uh, in Cleveland. We're on the shore of Lake Area, located Cods, submarine Cods, USS Cods. Very two, good. Two, two, four, or you say 224. Either way works. We're USS Cod Submarine Memorial. In America, we have uh, about 50 uh, ships, mostly World War II, uh, that have been preserved by uh, private organizations or state organizations. Cod is a privately managed uh, submarine memorial to uh, all of the men who have given their lives in the American Submarine Service from its inception in 1900. And uh, people say it's uh, the best restored submarine. Uh, I won't argue with them. But it's a classic World War II American submarine that uh, fought the war against Japan in the Pacific. Well, looks impressive, you know. And it's like it is right on the backgrounds of the uh, downtown. So now we can make deepest inside. Our seven-ton deck gun, which uh, we fire blanks uh, to, uh, to shock everybody in the neighborhood on special events and ceremonies. People are often surprised to see wood on a submarine, but wet wood isn't as slippery as wet steel. So around the conning tower where the deck guns are, you have wood so the crew doesn't slip overboard so easily. We added the red railing for public safety, but uh, this is the way the crew would enter the submarine. We haven't put doors or staircases through. We require everybody to uh, visit the submarine uh, and go inside the way the crew did. So let's go. Turn your body and then walk down the railing. Well, welcome aboard. We're in the forward torpedo room of the COD. Uh, we have our six torpedo tubes. 16 torpedoes were stored in here and we could sleep uh, 15 men at a time. There are 15 beds in here. And torpedo tube number one is open. Listed men's berthing space. The officers slept in the next compartment, but some of the enlisted crewmen of the COD could sleep in the torpedo room. They liked sleeping in here because it was cool, it was quiet, um, they had uh, some extra room in here. And the senior man could sleep in the penthouse bunk, high above everyone else. And of course, above the penthouse bunk is the loading hatch where the torpedoes are brought aboard. And we entered the boat uh, through uh, an escape trunk. It's an airlock, like on a spacecraft. It allows you to leave the submarine while it stays submerged without flooding the whole boat. We like to show the cod the way the crew would have left it if they were still living on board. So you'll see things like the ironing board, the towels. So as close to original as possible. Exactly. We base that on photographs. This is the officer's toilet. There were three more for the enlisted men. Go on through the door. This is the officer's pantry. And the wardroom. This is where the officers would uh, have their meals. Uh, they could uh, plan strategy. There's the codfish, our namesake. Let's see, ah, a photograph of the officer standing in that doorway, right here. In 1943, plug the radio in. It takes a while for this to warm up because, you know, it's an old tube radio and the speaker is over here. So we'll turn that in and tune in Radio Tokyo. Radio Tokyo. 
big band music from Tokyo, Japan. It's not like we're going to hear Tokyo Rose. Here's the captain's cabin right here. And I'll let you into a deepest insight into our restoration, only for real Russia. So, original World War II hair tonic and a pig bristle toothbrush. If you think your workspace is too small, look at the ship secretary or the yeoman. This was his office. Welcome to the control room. We have the control room lit in red light because this was the lighting that was used aboard submarines when they're on the surface at night. It allows your eyes to see clearly in the darkness. It's called rig for red or dark adaptation lighting. It also hides a lot of housekeeping sins. This is the Christmas tree. It tells us at a glance if we can dive safely. We have to have an all green board. If, uh, if it's red lights, it means something is open and will flood the boat. These are the levers that submerge the submarine. And this is our secret depth gauges right here. Ooh. And above is the attack center where we fire torpedoes and look through the periscope. And since this is the deepest insight, we have to go up there. Which normally the public, unfortunately, can't go. I'll go first, offer some help. And these are our two periscopes. Uh, be careful that you'll get a little water and hydraulic fluid on you because <laughs> they still work, but they leak a little bit. This is our night uh, or search periscope. This is our attack periscope. This is the sonar or listening system. This is radar. Sonar. This. Sonar, yes. And radars. And I will get out of your way. This is the most important thing right here. This is the torpedo data computer. It's an analog fire control computer that was an amazing piece of technology in World War II. It allowed us to aim our torpedoes to hit the enemy no matter where he was. Well, this is something everyone will understand. These are the firing buttons for the torpedoes. Fire three, stand by four, fire four, four fire. These buttons killed people. Forward tubes, after tubes. The executioner's buttons. And the steering wheel. Everybody can understand steering. And here, sir, if you want to look through the periscope, this is right here. Well, I see. Hopefully Lake Erie. <laughs> yes, Lake Erie. And you know when I turn... You can look up and down. Yes, it still works. Yes. Works perfect. That's why we don't allow the public up here because it would break very quickly. Really nice. Diving alarm, why don't you sound that, Sergey? It's very loud. Diving alarm is only, we turned it off throughout the boat because it would scare people. 
It means somebody's gonna hit us. Or something. <laughs> okay, General Quarters, all hands man your battle stations. General Quarters, General Quarters. All right. Now, Sergey, give me the camera. You're gonna grab this and pull it this way twice. Ooga, ooga, okay? Okay. Dive, dive. <laughs> The self-destruct switch, it uh, is set by the captain if he has to abandon ship and it blows the submarine up in 30 minutes. We did disconnect that, didn't we? I Evan? think so. Are you sure? Yeah. Would you wait here 31 minutes to find out for sure? Yes, we'll go aft. So this is the radio room and the American code machine. Is right there. Now we've all heard of Enigma. Enigma was actually a technologically backwards machine. It only had three rotors. The American code machine had 15 rotors. And the American code machine was never cracked during the Second World War. This is the cruise mess. 24 men at a time would eat in here. All the food was cooked in the galley for officers and enlisted men. You're standing over the refrigerator. This wasn't being used to feed 24 men at a time. This was also the movie theater and recreation hall for the enlisted men. And library, as you can see the books that are up oh, there. Yes. Watch your head. Below your feet is the magazine where we keep the shells for the deck cannon. And the ice cream maker. Some people think the radar or the atomic bomb uh, was why America won the war, but I think it was because our submarines had uh, an ice cream maker. Now if you needed a place, if my house didn't have a spare set of bedrooms you could sleep here wouldn't this be wonderful 36 beds that would be crew toilets washroom two-man shower washing machine the first of our two engine rooms uh, we're very proud that our uh, diesel generator sets were built here in Cleveland by General Motors. But this is also the dryer when you're on the surface. The engine rooms are very breezy as the air is drawn into the air engines. So you can hang your wet laundry here to dry. And our distilling plants to make fresh water from seawater. It's the telephone in the after engine room. It tells you how tells you how loud these engine rooms were when the diesel generators are running. Now these are V16 diesels, 16 cylinder, 1600 horsepower, but they don't turn the propellers directly. They make electricity. Each diesel generator is coupled to an 1100 kilowatt DC generator. And that electricity feeds electric motors that turn the propellers. And we're very proud that all of our engines can run. And the engines in this room we run on a, on a relatively frequent basis. I have a good crew and they've been able to restore these engines that were thought to be too far gone, but uh, we uh, return them to working condition. But without propellers, we're not gonna go on a war patrol. Now the next room is uh, the electrical distribution room, or maneuvering room. The electricians are uh, lucky to have a couch so they can sit on uh, while they uh, distribute the electrical power to wherever it's needed on the submarine. They can send the electricity to the batteries to recharge the batteries 
or to the electric motors that are below our feet under the deck that turn the propellers. Cod is in essence a 1942 Toyota Prius and we are blessed to have photos of these compartments in wartime. These are the uh, torpedo tubes. Yeah, the, the, well these are display cases for artifacts. They're in the shape of a uh, torpedo. Yeah, you know, here, this one has a light. Plug that in. This one, this case, we have to repair the light. Thanks for the tour guys, uh, really enjoyed this and uh, if you will be in the Cleveland, definitely visit this place, it's a real great museum. Thank you Sergey, it was a great honor having you and your family aboard. Look, what is this? You direct this gun on us? Don't shoot, please, I give up. Surrender, we surrender. In the end of the day, we are coming to the steakhouse Harris. Tomorrow morning we are going uh, forwards in our travel through the United States and we go to Chicago, Illinois. And today we have something like a farewell, farewell lunch in the Harris Steakhouse. Um, farewell dinner at Harris. Yes. Yeah. The only thing I want to say over and over again, looking at this, are you serious? <laughs> Well, you, you don't have to eat it all, but... This is a really huge steak, you know, I still really can get used to the American portions. Look here, look here, and, you know, look at this potato, look at that salmon, right? Look salmon. at the size of me, now you watch and learn. Size of you? Yes, I'm oh, yeah. big. Oh yeah. However, we are definitely never hungry in the States. Oh yeah. Well, I thought we were pushing it today because we didn't eat lunch. So we were sightseeing all afternoon. We didn't stop for lunch, just candy. So yeah, we earned this.